so, you are probably familiar with the idea that France surrenders all the time. You know, World War II and Iraq. But if you know at least the basics of French history, you know that France fought and won quite a lot of wars. So where does the idea that France surrenders come from? To start, a bit of history. This is the lovely country boys I drew myself on paint. French history often starts with the Gallic Wars, when Julius Caesar conquered Gaul. The fact is, Gauls were a pain the ass for the Romans since long before that. They sacked Rome in 390 BC. But the conquest of Gaul wasn't simply facing the Zerg rush of Gauls. Gauls were constantly fighting each other, so whatever side Caesar held with his legions was held. When trouble I, the other subdued and all of Gaul was conquered. Gaul was integrated into the Roman Empire and quickly became one of its bread baskets. That lasted until the barbarian invasions, spearheaded by the Huns. By this time, Rome was much weaker than it once was and relied on barbarians such as Franks in blue here and Visigoths in green here to defend itself. Together they stopped the Huns at the Battle of Chalon but the Huns weren't really defeated until Attila died. Anyway, some Germanic tribes occupied Gaul, some simply settled there, others were rewarded by Rome by southern by land. After Rome fell, the situation was a bit awkward. Several Germanic tribes, mostly Franks, Alamanni, Burgundy, and Visigoths, shared the area with the Gallo Roman realm in northwestern Gaul, in pink on the map. Who could win? Spoiler alert! Gaul is called France now. France, Franks. Yeah. Franks basically invaded everyone and conquered pretty much all of Gaul. During a few centuries, it is a complete mess. The Frankish custom being sharing the land between the sons. It's that annoying gravel kind of law if you play Crusader Kings 2. Though one not, one not worthy thing is Charles Martel stopping the Muslim invasion at Tours. Francia was, was united under the Carolingians, the most famous being Charlemagne, who crushed the Lombards and the Saxons in a bloody conquest, making the Frankish Empire span over France, of course but also over northern Italy and modern-day Germany. The empire was then split between its three grandsons, the imperial crown being given to Lothair, occupying the center. Let's focus on West, on, on West Francia with Charles the Bald. And look at this map. What could possibly go wrong here? Yeah, West and East Francia unite against Middle Francia and share the cake. East Francia quickly becomes the Holy Roman Empire, though it was in fact none of these three. Not Holy, not Roman, not Imperial. And West Francia became the Kingdom of France. Modern France is born. Al almost. During this period, the Vikings raid everything that moves. As they conquer some land, such as Northumbria in England, and the King of France makes a deal to get rid of them. He gives them the duchy of Normandy to have peace. Vikings quickly married in local population to the point that 150 years after they are indistinguishable from local French. It's an army of Frenchmen that William the Conqueror takes to invade England. Normans are French, not Viking, not anymore Viking. If you play Crusader Kings 2, you know what a bloody mess is managing your vassals. After some alliances, weddings, whatnot, the kings of the Dukes of Normandy, who also happen to be kings of England by now, also get Aquitaine in southern France. Their stats looking very powerful when compared to the King of France himself. So why not trying to be kings themselves? Come on, dude, guys, try it. So, during the next four centuries, France 
is most of the time at war with the Plantagenet dynasty, who rules Normandy, Aquitaine, and England. Sometimes France win, other times England win, for most of, of their troops were often French. And other times they make peace, but it's mostly to go to crusades <laughs> and then start fighting after anyway. <laughs> Eventually, France win. By the way, Jeanne d'Arc's contribution was mostly symbolic. I sometimes compare her to a mascot. The Hundred Years' War wasn't won until 20 years after her death. After the English are kicked from France, France remains peaceful. Just kidding, they invade Italy right away, and they often attack the Holy Roman Empire in following centuries. The French cap Peking have a bitter rivalry with the Habsburg dynasty that rules Spain and Austria while trying to expand at sea big rival with England. That makes a lot of enemies, <laughs> as you, <laughs> you probably guessed. At home, the kings gradually increase their power until reaching absolutism under Louis XIV. Louis XIV will significantly increase France's size. Sure, France loses colonies such as Quebec, but quickly take revenge against the English by helping America take its independence. At the end of the 18th century, France enters a period of total instability. First, make the king lose power by adding a parliament to the monarchy. Then, dispose of the king entirely on the guillotine. After a few failed attempts at creating a republic, some extremely bloody such as the terror, one guy named Napoleon Bonaparte takes power. By the way, pretty much all of Europe was at war with France at this point. Kings usually don't like revolutions where other kings lose their head. And not only France holds against Prussia and Austria and Russia and Great Britain, but also wins. Most of the reign of Napoleon can almost be seen as a repeating comedy. England pays everybody to make war with France, and everybody is beaten all the time. That, until Napoleon invades Russia and his army is broken, famously by winter, but most of his troops, most of them from allied countries, had deserted or were unable to fight even before taking Moscow. After this catastrophic defeat, all of Europe fight France once more, but France tries to hold. It takes two years to have France beaten. That plus the post credit scene, commonly known as Waterloo, the following year. France then fights a few wars in the 19th century, such as supporting Greek independence from the Turks, the Italian unity against Austria, and fights the Russians in Crimea. Of course, there is a lot of colonial wars. But the biggest war France has to fight in this period is Germany, which united just right now. Germany is an industrial power, far more advanced than France at this time, so they managed to get their troops together much faster and strike with a full power while, while France isn't ready yet. So the defeat is logical. France runs from the defeat, and when World War I ar arrives, a few decades after 1914, France is ready. When you watch an Hollywood movie about World War I, most of the time it shows a British army. The fact is, in the Western Front, most of the soldiers were French. I know, France could not have won without the British. But that doesn't remove the fact that French soldiers were <laughs> made the bulk of the work here. I mean, I know that this war was a huge tragedy. Ten million soldiers died in total during this war, including 1.4 million French soldiers. I know they are not in any case more important than other countries, but 
since the two is a little bit front, we'd focus on them. 1.5 million, 1.4 million in four years. To put that in perspective, it is more than the USA lost in combat during their entire history. And the USA are more populated than France. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I can laugh at jokes saying that France surrenders, except when it comes to World War One, because this is clearly insulting for World War One. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, the third wound of Germany against France. What you all were waiting for, the time that France surrenders. We we'll look at this in detail to explain why France surrender. First, most of Europe, including France, suffered from a hangover after World War I. Just look at the casualties. But Germany managed to quickly rearm. Why? Simple to explain. The Treaty of Versailles, a completely failed peace treaty, made the German people angry, making them ask for ask for revenge and elect Adolf Hitler. This is how they found the strength to fight World War II, while France really, really didn't want another war. And who could blame them? France had 40 million people during World War I and lost 1.4 million in the battle. To put it in perspective, if the USA today suffered such high casualties, they would lose between 10 and 12 million soldiers. Yeah, that's huge. But in any case, Hitler kept pushing for war, and a war he got at the end. France and Britain both declared war on Germany after Germany invaded Poland. Their strategy was roughly the same as in World War I, defend, while a naval blockade starves the German people. Did I mention that war is horrible, even for the side that can be considered as evil? That means Germany had to attack to win, like in World War I. The Franco-German border had huge fortifications, making an, uh, an attack there, perhaps not a suicide, but very costly and very slow. So, like in World War I, Germany will attack by the back door, through Belgium. So, Germany attacks. You'll probably agree with that fighting in another country is better than defending your own country. So, France marches towards the German army in Belgium. If it turns into a trench warfare, better ravage Belgium than France, from France's perspective. And France fell into the trap. Germany messes all of their tongues, the famous panzers, into one iron fist that cuts through a weak point in the French line and opens the way for German troops. That way, they entirely surround most of the French army. That is not right in Belgium. While the Be German troops can attack pretty much where they want in France. Being surrounded means that you don't get resupplied, meaning you won't last long anyway, and you cannot retreat without heavy fighting. And to add insult to injury, you cannot even defend your homeland if you are trapped in Belgium. Besides that, troops in Lorraine, the Franco-German border, border, are also under heavy fighting, taken from behind, and can't rescue the French army in Belgium. So, French armies are beaten. And keep fighting wouldn't offer any chance of winning the war anyway. That leaves only one solution, damage control. The French army has been beaten by a masterful strategy. So, I mean, if you can tell a good strategy from a bad one, you cannot ignore how good the Blitzkrieg is. You will say, the Soviets took insanely heavy punishment at the beginning of the war in 1941 but kept fighting and eventually won. The situation is different. First, the Soviets had, had huge rents that were expendable 
and the Basilian men that they could call. Casualties didn't matter to Stalin. But also, German troops behaved somewhat well by war standards in the Western Front. They were fighting Frankish cousins after all. In the Eastern Front, however, they killed large parts of local population, meaning the Soviets had nothing to lose. It was fighting the death or being killed anyway. The lucky ones could expect being deported in Slavic reservations in Siberia, according to Hitler's plan. Yeah, merciful, isn't it? So, if you compare 1940 to the rest of French history, 1940 is the exception. And still, surrendering wasn't because of cowardness, but simply because it was some kind of damage control. Also, we can have the fronts get fighting by some measure, thanks to resistant movements and free troops, who quickly become a pain in the ass for Germany, starting in Northern Africa, and then Italy, front itself. <laughs> I hope this video has been ins instructive. I had not without humor. I can have had good jokes that front surrenders, but don't think that front always surrenders. Oh, by the way. I forgot talking to the elephant in the room. What about Iraq? France didn't go there, go there true. Even blocking the United Nations. <laughs> but not because of coolness. France went to Afghanistan two years before. And if you know your world history, you know that Afghanistan is one of the hardest countries to fight in. No, the reason why was where were the weapons of mass destruction that Saddam Hussein was supposed to have. They were not there. <laughs> That's why we didn't go to Iraq.